Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and a lot of you have written in about Remix OS coming to PCs. Now, if you're not familiar with Remix OS, I'm going to show it to you right now. We do have it running on a, a PC at the moment. Uh, this is Android, except it looks like and acts like a desktop operating system. So I'm going to load up Excel here off the desktop. This is the Android version of Excel. This is not some Linux thing or some other kind of thing. This is an actual Android app that you can resize Windows with uh, and do everything you might want to do on a desktop computer, yet uh, you're running with mobile apps. And it really is quite remarkable. We looked at their uh, Remix Mini PC in a review a few weeks ago, so I go into detail about how all of this works. But uh, essentially, this is Android, except you've got uh, a really cool interface to this. And what they've done is uh, ported this away from their uh, own hardware and are now making it available in alpha to people who have PCs. And uh, provided you meet some minimum specifications, you can then uh, download download this and get it to run on uh, your computer just like I am on mine. Now what it's going to do is uh, install onto a USB 3 drive. I have it installed right now onto a USB 3 SSD. I'll show you how to get that onto an SSD in a minute because uh, you have their utility that they give you to burn it uh, only works with USB flash drives. Uh, that flash drive needs to be a USB 3.0 flash drive and it needs to uh, be able to write at at least 20 megabytes per second uh, because again you are running a full operating system here uh, even though it's Android off of a USB stick and uh, USB 2.0 speeds are not going to cut it. Um, so you definitely want to get a fast uh, little USB stick in there. You also need to make sure that your PC supports legacy mode in its BIOS for booting. Now every PC calls it something different. Some are conveniently calling it legacy mode. Uh, this one here, this is an MSI QB running with a Broadwell processor. Uh, this one is calling it um, Windows 8 mode, which you have to turn off and then you can go in and uh, be able to configure to boot off of the USB. So there are some different in how some of these PCs handle it. Uh, some PCs, in fact many uh, these days, don't support legacy mode at all. So some, some of those aren't going to work at, at all. But again, this is free, so if you can't get it to work, uh, you know, you're not going to be out anything but your time for trying to get it to work. Uh, but I am really impressed with how Remix is running. It's not running so great on this little Celeron Broadwell chip that it's in this uh, MSI QB right now, but uh, it is running really nicely on an i7 we'll look at in a few minutes. So it's definitely uh, a work in progress, but you can see here you can do all the things you would normally do on a desktop operating system. And uh, what's neat is that you have multi-layered Android apps here and they can run uh, in the background from each other too. So you can really make this thing work like a real true desktop desktop operating system and it is quite impressive. Uh, there are a lot of things that aren't working yet so the GPU stuff isn't tweaked. You're not going to get a lot of good gaming performance out of it but uh, if you wanted to try something fun just to play around with this weekend or this week or whenever, uh, this is going to be a really fun project to play with. Now uh, when they do updates to this they are going to uh, essentially have you reinstall it from scratch so you definitely don't want to get too attached to what you're running on your particular computer uh, because when there is an update at least for the time being those updates are going to wipe out what you've already installed. Uh, so again, this is very early days here, but uh, it is looking pretty polished here from the get-go. Uh, you definitely want to make sure you download it from the Remix OS website. I'll put a link down below in the video description so you can get to the right place because this is something that I'm sure a lot of people are going to start uh, hacking around with. And uh, although this is not designed to do damage to your computer the way it installs, uh, there are some things that could happen if somebody uh, does something bad or uh, unintentional to uh, an unofficial copy of it. Now, what's really cool is that because this runs completely off of this drive, it's completely portable. So you can shut this down, pull this drive out, plug it into a different PC, and as long as it's relatively compatible, uh, it's going to boot up and put you back exactly where you left off. So that is a really nice thing to see. It also boots up on the Mac too, believe it or not. So uh, you can really move this thing around and boot it up on a bunch of different PCs. It is very flexible. Uh, it's using Android x86 underneath it. It's basically like a live CD uh, that you might play around with on uh, the Linux side of the world. Uh, this is basically doing the same thing with uh, this version of Android. Now one thing the public release of this this alpha is not going to have is the Google Play Store. So all the Google services are not going to be on here, at least in the uh, immediate future. So uh, there are ways you can sideload APK files on. We're going to actually right now uh, take a look at running uh, Amazon's Android App Store. So I'll download their APK real quick here. Hopefully it'll work. Uh, you got to make sure your unknown sources are turned on. And uh, if you do that, it should install without issue here. So let's download this and see what happens. They've got a really nice uh, file manager as part of this also. Uh, so we'll go uh, pop into there. We'll go into our downloads folder. There's that APK. I'll double click on that. I'll accept all of its uh, privacy uh, warnings there and let that install. And hopefully we should be able to see our Amazon App Store here pop up in a second. And that would probably be the easiest way to get 
uh, some kind of app store going on here. Of course, if you have APK files already, those should be easy to sideload. Uh, and if you uh, have some means of getting Google Play onto uh, an Android installation that doesn't have it, that should work too. I think what I might do in a future video is take a look at how to do that. Uh, there's a lot of licensing issues at play here, which I'm sure is why they're not uh, doing it with this version of uh, the uh, Remix OS just yet, but uh, it is on their uh, version of their of this beta version that I have here, but also on the Remix Mini PC. So I'm sure it's going to be possible. It's just not going to be uh, working at the moment right now. Uh, so what I'm going to do next is uh, shut this down. We're going to boot it back into Windows so I can show you how to get uh, everything loaded up onto this device, and then we'll go ahead and try it on a few different devices too. All right, I've booted back into Windows because I want to show you what you'll see when you download the Remix OS for uh, your computer. So you're going to have a uh, ISO file here. It's about 2.2 gigabytes. And you also have a USB burning tool, which I'll load up real quick. And if you just are using a USB stick, what you'll do is put that stick in. Uh, it'll recognize that that stick is plugged into your computer. You just find that ISO file in the same directory where uh, you downloaded all of your stuff to here. So we'll go back and navigate back to that uh, thing there. So just click on that ISO and then it'll find that USB stick there. You hit OK and then uh, it will burn it. Now if you plug in, which I'll do right now, uh, a SSD like we have right here. I'll just pop this in here and uh, put this in over here. By the way, if you're wondering what enclosure this is, this is called a stock plop. I reviewed it a couple of weeks ago. I'll put it in the uh, video description for you to check out. It's been very versatile, uh, really good for using uh, SSD drives like this. Uh, you'll notice here that it's not finding that drive though because this is not considered a USB stick. It's considered a hard drive. So what I'm going to do is boot up a different utility uh, called Rufus. And I've been using this for a lot of stuff, when I, especially when I want to burn uh, things to a USB drive to boot from. And uh, what I like about Rufus is that it's a little bit more flexible uh, on as to how it can uh, write these things to different devices. So what I'm going to do here is I got Rufus loaded up. I'm going to go find that ISO file again. So let's just go grab it over here. We'll go to the desktop. I'll go back to where I downloaded the ISO. We'll click on that. And what I'm going to do here is uh, un uh, check down the uh, format options here. There's a little arrow that if you click on this, it'll show you an option to list USB hard drives. And when I do that, uh, you'll notice that that drive is now appearing as something I can write to, which is exactly what we want to do. I do want to change this over to uh, the MBR partition screen for BIOS. So I'll click on that. Uh, we have that ISO file already pointed at that drive. And I'll click on Start here. And we're going to write it in ISO mode. And it should just take a second or two uh, to get this going. It is going to erase everything on this hard drive, which is fine. All right, so I shut the QB down. We're going to boot it back up now and boot off that image we just burned. But we have to do something else first. And that is change the BIOS back into legacy mode here. So I'm going to uh, boot up the QB here. I'm going to hit the delete key on my keyboard to get into its BIOS. Every PC has a different way to get into its BIOS. So this one is delete. Yours might be F2. Others might be F10 or F12 or some other key. Uh, so you're going to need to look at your instructions or your support documentation to figure out exactly what you need to get into the BIOS. And uh, like uh, the key, every BIOS does things a little bit differently. So on this one, uh, they call the legacy mode uh, the Windows 8 8.1 configuration. They don't call it legacy here. They call it this. Uh, so if I go in here, you can see right now that it's enabled. I'm going to disable that. Uh, and that is effectively enabling legacy mode. And again, every computer is going to be different. So you're going to need to consult with your tech support people or whoever helps you with your computer uh, to get the right setting for what you need to do. But you can see here we have the USB hard disk now set for boot order number one. Uh, and hopefully when we reboot here, that will uh, get this thing going here. So I'm going to save changes and reset now. And hopefully this will boot up uh, onto our stock plop here and uh, get our Android installation going. And we'll let this uh, boot up here and hopefully we will see this start to blink and uh, we will be in business. Let's see, here it goes. And there we are. So now it's starting to uh, read off that drive. Now you're gonna see I have an option here. Uh, one is guest mode, which means that you can go in and play around in the operating system and nothing will be saved after you're done. Uh, the other mode is resident mode where it will save your data, which is the one I'm going to boot up here. So I'm gonna select that. Uh, and now it's going to do its thing here. And uh, what it does initially on the first boot is that it does some uh, configuration to get the partition set up. And then uh, when it's done, it'll boot up a little bit faster in subsequent reboots. So we're going to let this thing run for a second. And uh, hopefully within a few minutes here or less, we will be able to be back on our uh, Android desktop with the Remix OS. All right, and here we are at the Remix OS desktop on our new installation. The only thing I'm going to do right now is just create a folder called test because 
I want to see if this will show up when we start booting this up uh, on different computers. So I'm going to shut this down now. Uh, we're going to take out some other devices and see how it works when we take this drive out of this computer and put it in another one. So I wanted to find the fastest thing I had in the studio to play with. This is a, a Lenovo i7 Skylake quad-core based gaming laptop we looked at a couple of days ago. Uh, what's nice is that it boots up off of that very same disc we just burned on the uh, little MSI QB PC and it comes right up without too many issues here. Uh, the touchscreen even works too, so I can select that folder there. I uh, used the touchscreen to move some things around, so that was nice to see that there really wasn't anything to install, yet it found uh, all the drivers. Even little things like uh, the uh, volume controls here Work, uh, as well as the screen brightness too. So it's really nice to see that it really picks up a lot of the things that uh, it should, or hopefully should, uh, do as far as compatibility is concerned without having to install any drivers. And again, I can pull this hard drive out and use it on something else also. Now some things didn't work, namely the HDMI port uh, as well as the wireless here. So not everything is going to be compatible when you come over, but uh, a lot of it will be. And every computer, again, is going to have different things that it's going to throw at you. So again, this is alpha. It's going to take some time for all this stuff to get worked out. Uh, but what's nice is just how much faster uh, this i7 Skylake is versus the uh, little Broadwell uh, Acceleron we were running on the QB. So things really spring to life here on this one uh, a lot faster because, again, we've got a lot more processing horsepower here and this is just you know an example of what needs to get optimized this is still in beta form right now or alpha form for that matter so it's going to take some time for things to uh, really get uh, you know optimized on every platform but you can just see how fast this is as a browsing platform on an i7 and I think over time uh, given what we saw with the remix mini PC which was running a, a very low-end processor it was running pretty nicely actually all things considered so I'm sure that over time uh, that little uh, and that little QB we were running just a few minutes ago is going to perform uh, close to where we would expect it to. Uh, just right now, it's going to take some time to get all those optimizations worked in. But uh, for what they've done here on a first alpha release, it's still uh, looking pretty good. We got one more thing to check out, though. Let me go take this off the desk, and I'll uh, pull out our next surprise. All right, so I'm going to commit an act of sacrilege here. We're going to run Android on a Mac. I'm holding down the Option key. We've got that hard drive plugged in via USB here on the side. A USB 3 port on the Mac here. This MacBook Air is about four years old. It's running with an i5 processor. Uh, and you'll see now that we have a, a little, it says Windows, but we're actually going to run a uh, uh, Android operating system on here. So we'll let this thing boot up. We're getting that same screen we had before. So I'll hit uh, resident mode. And this is going to, again, uh, take that folder over that we had on the other machine and also all the settings that we have too. So I believe the Wi-Fi is going to work on this one versus the, uh, the, the Windows PC we were just on that didn't have compatible Wi-Fi. So this should actually connect up uh, with my Wi-Fi network and we should be ready to go here. So give it a second here and boom, we are back up on the desktop. We have our test folder there as well, the one that we left on the other machine. It is here waiting for us now. Now you'll notice though that my uh, pointer here is a circle because it detects the trackpad as a touch screen for some reason. So this is again alpha. This is the kind of stuff you deal with here. Uh, but look at this. Isn't this cool? So I'm putting two fingers down. I'll zoom out a little bit on the camera here so you can see what I'm doing. I've got two fingers on my mouse here. It's detecting that I'm doing a, a pinch to zoom kind of thing. I can even go uh, with four fingers on there too. So really cool how that works. And I'm going to take my mouse here and just plug it in just so I can have something fun functional uh, working. It'll just take a second. There I go, touching the screen already. Uh, just take a second for the, uh, the mouse to get detected here, but it was working earlier. Hopefully it'll start working again here. Uh, here it is. So then we have a full mouse pointer and I can always switch back to the touchpad if I want to do that. Uh, we'll load up Chrome here. We'll load up my YouTube page maybe and just take a look at uh, browsing YouTube with Chrome. And uh, there we go. And it's actually running pretty nicely on here. I'm actually pretty surprised by how nice this is running. Again, this is an i5 uh, based MacBook Air, four years old or so. I could not get it to work with my 12 inch MacBook yet. So I'm going to keep playing with that a little bit. I think it'd be kind of neat to run uh, Android on that. But uh, older Macs here seem to be doing fine. They must have a legacy mode that uh, the other computers don't seem to support, but uh, really nice uh, Android experience here uh, on our MacBooks. So this is just the first alpha release of Jide's Remix OS, but they've already accomplished the goal for me at least of running Google Play apps on my Mac, uh, which is awesome. So we're starting to see some really cool things happening here with uh, this project that they've started. Uh, do check out my Remix OS review uh, on the Remix PC because that will give you a really good feel for how this works and what their vision is for it. But I think they're off to a tremendous start here. The fact that a lot of things do work like touchscreen compatibility, uh, the Mac, for example, and many other things too. So this is just the beginning. I'm sure we'll be doing a lot of follow-ups on this project because uh, this is a really cool implementation of Android and I'm really excited to see what they do with it next. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.
This channel is brought to you by the generosity of my Patreon supporters. If you find the channel helpful, you too can contribute for as little as a dollar a month. Visit lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more.